Welcome back to another episode of TC Tube. Today we're going to show you how to calculate the energy savings on a boiler replacement. I'm going to show you two different ways to do it. Uh, one is a spreadsheet uh, available from Energy Star, and the other one is a calculation that we do by hand and have done here for decades. So here's the spreadsheet. Um, and if you need the spreadsheet, uh, I will uh, put in the links down in the video on how you can download it. Uh, you're going to pick your fuel source. So we're going to pick gas in our case. You're going to pick your rate. I'm going to put in 70 cents a therm. If you're not sure why I do that, watch any one of our other videos on anything like this and you'll see how I got the 70 cents, but it's all the taxes and fees and everything rolled in. Obviously, I'm not going to pick the default of New York. That would not help us today because I am in Illinois. So I'm going to pick Chicago, Illinois. Um, and then the square footage of the home, uh, we'll just leave it up to 2,500. How old is the home, age of construction? So we'll say it's from the 80s. And the existing boiler is from when? And I'll say that's also from the uh, late 80s. All right, so that's some estimates that it's gonna make uh, based on the existing home. And it's gonna do like a little mini load calculation in the background. You can also then tell it how expensive these things are. So depending on what you had picked, for example, if I would have left this as a newer boiler, so I'm picking a brand new boiler, then I got different dollar amounts that it's gonna make the assumption on. In other case, you probably wanna change those dollar amounts to whatever it is you're actually proposing, because that's gonna come into the payback calculation. So if you're proposing a certain dollar, a certain boiler for 5,800 bucks, put in 5,800 bucks. If your other low efficiency 80% choice is is $4,100, put $4,100, whatever that happens to be, put it actually, not $41,000, holy cow, put $4,100 in. What efficiency boiler are you gonna be offering them? So maybe the other one's a 94 and one of them's an 80. And then do you have a programmable stat on this thing or not? So you can change those things to what you need them to be for your specific scenario with your customer. And then it's gonna give you this little summary here. So it's going to tell you the energy cost that you're actually using on the new unit versus the 80% unit. And then the difference is your savings, 216 bucks in this particular example. Uh, it's gonna tell you in terms if you wanna know that, but dollar amount is what most people wanna know. But it'll tell you the therm savings as well. And it'll also give you a life cycle cost analysis on how much you're gonna save over the life expectancy of the boiler. So yeah, saving $216 a year by going with the 94 instead of the 80%. But over the course of time, that's gonna be almost $3,000 in utility gas savings. The payback in this case is 7.9 years. The payback is obviously based on the first cost difference and the energy savings. Those things come into play. If the price of the two things is closer to each other, $5,000 versus $5,800, then obviously my payback goes down. So seeing a high efficiency boiler in that eight, nine, 10 year payback is not abnormal. That's, that's a pretty normal range to see for a payback calculation on a boiler. And a lot of boilers are gonna last 20, 25, 30 years. So uh, a seven year payback is not a horrible scenario. Uh, if you're getting a utility rebate, let's say you're gonna get $300 from the utility for this high efficiency one, put this back to what it was, I don't remember what it was. Let's say it was that scenario. So instead of 5,800 bucks, I would put 5,500 in because the utility is giving me $300. Right? And that also would change my payback from seven point something years to five point something years. So that's one way we can do it with this spreadsheet. Another way that we do it is by hand. Uh, we used to do this just on, you know, a legal pad, scratching it out. But the folks over at Nicor Gas a few years ago made this little kind of cheat sheet guideline. So I'm gonna show you that, but it works the exact same way. So step one is to get the customer's utility bills. That is literally the hardest step because they may not have them or know where to find them. Um, if they can give you a year's worth of bills, great. If they can't, when they log into their utility website, whatever utility they're working with probably has a website, they can log into their account and they can look at all of their utility bills for the past 12 months or more from there. What you wanna do is get all the bills for the winter time. I wanna get October through April, because that's when I'm likely to run heating and I add them all up. So in this example, it was $2,500. Then I wanna get a summer bill, probably a July bill. Why do I want a summer bill? Because I wanna see how much gas this house uses when there's no heating going on. So what are they using for their water heater and their stove, dryer, whatever else they got going on that has nothing to do with heat? So let me see that. So for April, or excuse me, for July, let's pretend it was a $50 bill, right? So then I'm gonna take the $50 for July and multiply it by the five months that I don't use any heat. Or excuse me, the seven months that I am using heat, sorry. That's 350 bucks. So I gotta take $350 out of the 2,500 bucks. 
because of that 2,500 bucks I spent last summer or last winter, excuse me, 350 has nothing to do with heating the building. I'm gonna take that back out. Then I gotta decide, uh, that comes out to $2,100, how efficient the boiler I'm gonna put in it versus the one I'm taking out. In this example, I'm taking a 70% efficient boiler out, so probably like 25, 30 year old boiler, and I'm putting in a 95%. That's gonna save me 25%. That's going to be $537 of savings a year for that example. And then there's a little note that we added on here. Uh, if you're using an outside air reset control, it's usually another 10 to 15%. On a boiler like this, a high efficiency boiler, it's probably more on the 10% side. So it's another 50 bucks of savings I might get out of that. Uh, if you have an old inefficient beastly boiler, then outside air reset has an even better energy saving stories because there, there's more waste. So hence there's more savings. But on a 95% boiler, another 10%, so it's another 50 bucks. So about $600 in savings for this particular example. So that gives you two different methods to calculate the energy savings on a boiler replacement. Uh, take a look at some of our other videos on calculations for heat pumps, AC, furnaces, all kinds of stuff like that. Thank you guys for joining us.